a harvest is underway in Oneida this month. Angela Kelly joins us live with more on the heirloom white corn crop. Good morning, Ange. Hey guys, we are at uh, the Agricultural Center here in Oneida. It's called Junhaqua. And right now they are harvesting uh, heirloom white corn. And here to tell us more about it is Ted Scanador. He's a supervisor here. Good morning to you, Ted. Good morning. Uh, let's start with what, what this crop is and why it's important to the Oneida community. Okay, this is an heirloom white corn, and it's been in our lives for years. It goes back to our creation story. And it was uh, one of our three main staples for food sources. So we call it our three sisters, that be, um, is corn, beans, and squash. So what we're doing is we're harvesting the corn, and as you can see, this is picked right off the stock. And so what we're gonna have people do is go out to the field, and we call it snapping, because it makes a noise when it pops. And uh, we're gonna pull this back down the three inner ears. And then we're gonna take these off and put them in a big box, and then pull these back so that these guys can braid it up. Because what we're trying to do is uh, get this ready for people to eat. This is all for food. It's mm -hmm. all hand harvested. How so much of it is hand <coughs> harvested? This year we have six acres. Wow. So we have a three incredible. acre parcel over here and another three acre parcel in the back. So it's braided over here, which we're going to explain more throughout the morning. I'm actually going to learn more about this braiding process. But it's all because it needs to hang and dry, right? This is what That's this right. is. That's right. This is a traditional way that it was done many years ago. We also do a couple other styles. Like one is just laying it out, but it can't just be put into a corn crib like most corn because it will mold and sprout. So we have to really take care of this corn. It's very labor intensive. So where does it go from here? From here, it will go over to our community cannery where it's made into several products. There's about eight or nine different products that it's actually made out of several types of soup, uh, some mush, and some bread. And they also make flour, so you can do this at home. Yeah. So once it, it goes to the cannery, then it goes to our... Uh, retail store. So we're actually a sustainable model. We're the agricultural site. We have a community cannery and a retail store. And all of this is open to anybody. Right. And that's the cool part because right now through Friday, you're having this um, harvesting and husking bee. So people can come out. They can help you do this and learn about it, right? Definitely. That's what it's all about. Sharing some stories and having some fun. Getting out in the fresh air. And uh, we're actually going to have a lot of different school groups coming through during this week. I think there's about 600 different um, youth that's going to be out in the fields assisting with us with the cool. picking of the corn. And nine, nine to five um, people can come out and Nine help, to five right? every day we're going to be out here and even after this is over we'll still be out here picking the corn. The corn doesn't just go away when this is over but yeah. we still have to take all the corn off and it's all done by hand so it's, it's a lot incredible. Of work. It really is incredible and I can't wait to see it because they're going to actually take me out to the field. You're going to kind of show me that process of hand picking it. We're going to do some braiding. We're going to look at some of the products, the things that you can eat with this corn. Um, really I think it's going to be an exciting morning. It's very interesting, too. Thanks yes. for sharing, Ange. Thanks, Ange. Mm -hmm.